I'm Alexa Schwerha with Campus Reform. Today, I am joined by Stuart Regis, a professor at the University of Washington, who recently has come under fire after refusing to implement a university-written land acknowledgement into his classroom syllabus. Professor, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Of course. Can you give us a little backstory on what is going on at the University of Washington? Sure. Well, we have this focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, we're supposed to be doing things to try to move in that direction. And our experts within the Allen School said that we should include a land acknowledgement in our syllabus. I thought that was an odd idea. I, I, I don't like land acknowledgements. I think it's a bad idea. But I decided to kind of test the waters a bit by including my own version of the land acknowledgement, which doesn't match the kind of the progressive ideology. And they freaked out. I mean, you know, uh, so I, I put it on my syllabus this quarter and students complained and they just, they were horrified. They said, you know, this was deeply offensive. They uh, removed my syllabus. They uh, erased that part of the syllabus. They apologized to the students and they set up an alternate section of the course so that students who were so offended by me could switch into a different version of the course. Interesting. So can you tell us a little more about land acknowledgements? Is this something that's been around the university or is this completely new? It's not completely new. It was kind of more common in Canada and in Australia, but it's been coming to the U.S. recently. Uh, so, you know, it, it, this is sometimes used like at the beginning of events, like if you're going to go watch a play or something, they'll sometimes do a land acknowledgement before the play begins. And, you know, there, there was a suggestion to include it on the syllabus. I mean, it's part of progressive ideology. This is stolen land. You know, if you read the University of Washington's description of it, they say that this is a way of recognizing that the university sits on occupied land. I mean, kind of my feeling is if we think the land belongs to the Native Americans, let's give it back to them. I mean, what's the use of saying, I acknowledge, you know, this? So I just I think they're silly. I wish they I wish they would go away. Right. It definitely raises, you know, some concerns about progressive ideology is constantly being pushed in college classrooms. Do these acknowledgments have anything to do with your specific course? They do not. And in fact, they've used that argument against me. They said I shouldn't include it because it doesn't it isn't relevant to my course. But then why would you include their version of it if it's not relevant to the course? Absolutely. And one thing that I just found completely fascinating about your story is you made your own land acknowledgement that you know, had your own opinions in there. And like you said, they took it out. What led you to the decision to go against the grain and stand up for your beliefs in the classroom? Well, my I guess my feeling is, I mean, well, first of all, these things are have almost the status of a prayer. You know, it's like we're going to say a prayer. Everybody gets very quiet. You, know, you almost wonder whether you should bow your head or something while this is happening. And uh, I, I feel that what it is being used to do is to kind of telegraph, say to the audience, in this case, say to students, this is a course where progressive ideology is the norm. You know, so it kind of establishes that. And so I wanted to see what it would be like to establish a different norm, you know, and you can see the results. Right. They did not respond kindly to no. when you did that at all. Yeah. So can you touch a little more on that? So the university sees the statement, um, they pull it, they set up a different course. How does that treatment make you feel? But also what message is that sending to other professors or students who might agree with you? Well, you know, the, the thing that first upset me was just that they emailed all of my students saying that Professor Regis had said something offensive. You know, so they immediately kind of chime in and tell my students he's done something bad. You know, so I mean, I, it's beginning of the quarter. I'm trying to establish a relationship with my students. They don't know me very well. So to have this kind of coming, it was very upsetting. It was it was very disappointing. It make, makes it more difficult for me to have a good relationship uh, with my students. Um, Definitely can imagine that. And this isn't anything new. You know, lately here at the Leadership Institute's campus reform, we have seen multiple instances of this happening on college campuses, whether it be a syllabi that includes LGBTQ safe zones or apologizing for white privilege. Uh, why are universities beginning to push this social justice agenda um, through professor syllabi's? 
Well, I think there's this question of what does it mean to pursue the diversity, equity, and inclusion agenda? You know, and it kind of sounds good. Who could be opposed to diversity? Who could be opposed to equity and so forth? Well, or inclusion, for example. You know, one of the things that I've discovered about that word, you think inclusion means including people and including ideas, but it doesn't. For them, inclusion means silencing people like me because some particular students in the class might be offended by my ideas. So they need to be protected, you know, from these dangerous ideas. I just think that's an awful, awful thing for a university to do. It's, it's kind of all about where are we going with this diversity stuff? And uh, I, I see a lot of what's happening uh, very disturbing. Right. And you're not backing down from this either. You have sought the help of Foundation of Individual Rights and in Education, a nonprofit that's known for their commitment to upholding freedom of speech. Can you tell us a little bit more about their response? Sure. Well, I suspected that this was a problem for the university. We're a state school, which means that we have to uh, recognize the First Amendment, you know. And so if you're going to have a limitation on speech, it has to be content neutral. You can't say these land acknowledgements are okay and these are not. You know, conservatives don't get to speak. You're just not allowed to do that. That's what I thought was true. And the lawyers at FIRE seem to agree. They've written a letter to the university demanding that uh, this policy be changed, my syllabus be reinstated, you know, and that they make it all clear, you know, to people. So uh, I think there's a very interesting First Amendment issue here. And what action do you hope that this letter will prompt the university to take? Well, my ideal would be that we just get rid of land acknowledgements and on all of the syllabi across campus. That would be my preference. But at least, you know, make it clear that you can't favor one ideology over another. Right. And you're hardly alone in professors attempting to push back against liberal bias that is stemming from administrations. At Loyola University, for example, in New Orleans, Campus Reform covered a story about another professor who was under investigation for using words and phrases that it turns out he didn't say in the classroom, all because students disagreed with his libertarian views. When universities take part in this cancel culture trend, what can be done to counter it and preserve academic freedom and intellectual diversity? Well, I think just kind of pushing back whenever we can. I think it'd be great if a lot of other people did what I've done, you know, which is to try writing their own version of a land acknowledgement. Let's see what happens if we try it in lots of places. But I think, you know, not, not letting yourself be silenced, not letting the, this have a, the chilling effect that they'd like it to have. I just think, you know, a lot of us need to do this kind of thing and try to, to stand up for what we believe and I don't know if we're going to be able to move the universities in a better direction, but I don't know a better thing to do than to try. Absolutely. Well, Professor, best of luck to you. And thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks for having me.